IDPA created an effort to like degamify the this you know political shooting sport, but in the end, it, in the end, it's also a game with rules, and sometimes even following those rules actually takes like you wouldn't do those ne those things necessarily in real life. Wilderness Tactical has been around for longer than the gun you're carrying has been and they have been making high quality products for concealed carriers for literally decades. I wear their low pro belt every year. The webbing is the best in the industry and I won't wear anything else. If you're looking for a good CCW belt, check them out. Like the reloads, that's another one. In USPSA, you can reload anytime you want. Unless you're on a standards type stage, uh, which is more like, a, think like you're shooting a drill. It's like if I told you to shoot a build drill, that's a very simple example, but a build drill is what? Six rounds, an A box, seven yards. seven yards. See, you got like most of you know what a build drill is. That's a standard drill that is well known. So USPSA has standards type stages that are pres that are more prescribed. Like you're going to be in a box at this distance, and you've got this many targets, and you can only shoot them this many times, and you got to do a mandatory reload at a certain time. But those are the exception, not the rule in USPSA. Most of USPSA is, a, is, a, is what you see behind us, which is known as a freestyle type approach, and that's what we're going to do today. So you can, when I say you can engage any of these targets in any order, however you see fit, I, I really mean that as long as you fall within the safety rules and boundaries that we establish. Uh, IDPA is just a little bit more prescribed in some of that approach. Uh, the reloads in IDPA, you have to, if, if you're not totally empty, meaning slide locked back, you have to do a tactical reload, meaning stowing or retaining your magazine. Which is funny because I did a lot of tactical training too, where tactical trainers taught, you know what, you got four rounds left in that mag, but I got a full one here and time's of the essence, full flip, dump that thing and get this bigger thing in and let's go back to work solving a problem. But anyway, in IDPA, you got to tactically reload, stow a magazine. Uh, you can re you know, reload while, while just dropping a mag, but you got to be totally empty when you do those. So what happens with competitors? <coughs> competitors by nature are gamers. And so a competitor goes, well, in this position, I've got, I know I've got 10 rounds in my gun, and I've got eight targets, or excuse me, four targets, so I'm going to send two at each, so that's eight rounds. And they get to that last target, and they go, they go one, two, the first two shots, and they go two more, yeah. right, to get an empty gun so they can do the easier reload, so they don't have to be bothered with a tactical reload. See what I mean? So IDPA still gets gamed. And just know that obviously there, there's a different flavor between IDPA and USPSA. Uh, there's other competitive disciplines like uh, Steel Challenge, which is very simple, uh, and that's a different thing. There's three gun, multi-gun, um, but this, what we're doing today is USPSA, uh, which is what I do primarily and what I enjoy. And uh, because of the freestyle nature, it gives us greater freedom uh, and leeway to approach this how we want, which is going to really come into play when we actually start breaking the stage down and shooting the different components. So that's the point of today's class. All right, so let's talk. Um, by the way, welcome Brian Hill. Thank you from Complete Combatant. He said he's going to come assist. And I'm happy he's, he, he's here, so thank you, Brian. Always a pleasure to have you. Anything this man says, listen, he's like the, you know, shooting whisperer. <laughs> He'll be over your ear, like, whispering. Uh, also, Tori Soper helping today as an AI as well. Thank you, Tori, for being here. And Tori helped yesterday, and really appreciate uh, having some help. Thank you. Uh, all right, so let's talk about uh, safety. So uh, three rules that obviously we have here at the ASP National Conference. Number one, I talked about one earlier a little bit briefly. Uh, always keep the muzzle point in the direction of least consequence. Least consequence. Uh, let's define that right now. So, and you've heard this from other instructors at this event, but direction least consequence here on these ranges is where? Down range. But let's get a little more specific with respect to USPSA competitive shooting. So imagine, like perpendicular to the side berms or parallel to the back berm, which, which is typical, although occasionally we shoot matches or stages on berms that may be kind of skewed or something. But here it's very simple. This is, very, this is a rectangle that we're sitting in. And we also have a fault line on the back. If you can't see it where you are, you'll see it when you come up in a minute. And that fault line is also perpendicular to these side berms or parallel to the back berm. And so 
you can kind of use that as a gauge. You can stand there and kind of see that and go, hey, at all times, as I am navigating my way about this stage, imagine a, an invisible line or plane that passes through your body and moves with you at all times, okay? That is 180 degrees that you have to stay within. That is up, down, and side to side, okay? So just, you have to have that in your mind. So as you navigate the stage, and as you're shooting different targets and things, now I've tried to set up the stage so that there's not any what we call 180 traps, meaning you shouldn't have any reason to try to engage targets behind you because as you go forward, things get covered up, okay? Usually by barrels or whatnot. Uh, but just know that as you're going through the stage, shooting all the targets, you gotta stay within that 180 degrees. And as long as you stay within that 180 degrees, your muzzle is in the direction of least consequence. Yes, sir. All stations forward motion, no backups. No, I don't care. You, reverse motion, okay. Reverse motion's that's, fine. Sometimes that gets tricky. But it can, yeah. No, I, I'm okay with that. I'm gonna be right there. Yesterday I had a couple people surprise me because they got forward and I thought they were done and all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute, and they backed up a couple of steps and I, it is what it is. I'm right there and I, I will put a hand out to, to help steady you, stop you, uh, prevent you from doing anything too stupid. So that's, that's, that's what we call the 180 rule, uh, which by the way in the rule book of USPSA they don't re reference it as that, but that's what it is. That's the easiest way to think about it and describe it. Uh, we're going to stay within 180 degrees, direction of least consequence. Okay. What are some of the common times or places or actions where a shooter on a stage breaks the 180. So if I'm if I'm facing square down rage and I'm performing a reload where I bring my gun in a little bit, cant it a little bit, that sort of thing to optimize that reload, not a problem because I'm like at 45-ish degrees, maybe 60 degrees or whatever from from a center line. Um, but imagine you're kind of more oriented this direction. But my 180, see, I said it's moving with you at all times, even if you're oriented sideways. It doesn't move with you like this, right? Um, so let's imagine you're kind of oriented this direction, but my 180's here. I'm doing fine shooting these targets, but then I go to perform reload. See how easy? And in the moment, I promise you, because I've seen it a number of times, that in the moment is very difficult, especially as you're learning the sport, to be mentally aware enough to go, oh wait, this is a problem, okay? And if we see the 180 broken, meaning I'm gonna, I'm gonna call out, perhaps yell somewhat, the word stop. And at any time, if you, it won't be cease fire, it will be stop. If you, any time you're shooting today, if you hear stop, what should you do? Stop precisely where you are, stop precisely what you're doing, and wait for further instructions.